Hey everybody, welcome into the um, Mariners post game. Um, we'll call it the weekend recap. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make a video yesterday. I'm in the middle of moving, still moving right now. Um, so I did get home in time to make a video last night, but I was just so exhausted that I, I was almost going to do it. Just do a little five minute recap, but um, I, I fell asleep essentially. I just didn't have the energy to do it. Um, so just going to do a quick little recap of the weekend's games. The Mariners do win both games over the Oakland A's, improving to 39 and 42 on the season. Um, both games by a score of 2-1. to one. Um, Kind of in different fashion, though. Yesterday, um, we'll start with Saturday's game. It looked like a game that was going to be um, kind of one of those games for the Mariners. Um, Paul Blackburn had shut them down for six and two-thirds. The A's got a run on a Sean Murphy sack fly in the first. Um, George Kirby re really settled in after that um, and went seven strong. Um you know, with Kirby yesterday, with Robbie Ray today, I know a lot of people say it was just the A's. And and, and yes, it's it's not a good A's lineup. We'll see how they do um, in the next few weeks here as the uh, competition gets a little bit better. But the A's still score more than one run a game. So Kirby and Robbie Ray today both held the A's under their season average of what they do. So it's still impressive performances um, to shut them down the way they did. Kirby had nine strikeouts over seven innings. Um, in the bottom of the eighth, Justin Upton, a big pinch hit home run. Um, Upton probably buys himself a couple more weeks on the roster, at least with that home run. Um, I think he was getting pretty close to being DFA'd. He was essentially um, Sam Haggerty was playing every day over Upton at that point. Um, and Upton came in and pinch hit for Haggerty um, and did exactly what they needed him to do. They're looking for a home run in that spot. Um, and Upton was able to deliver. Unfortunately, today he didn't do a whole heck of a lot, and he's probably going to be on the roster for a little bit because they're going to have Jesse Winker probably starting his six-game suspension tomorrow. Um, you still have Ty France out, not that that really affects Upton's position. Um, then you're going to have Julio suspended for a game, which isn't the end of the world. You can look at that as a day off. Um, but you're going to need some outfield depth. And then, obviously, you know Taylor Trammell just went on the IL. So I think Upton does stick for a little bit here. Um, until maybe you get Mitch Hanniger or Kyle Lewis back. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Um, but yeah, Upton hits the home run. Um, and then the bottom of ninth, uh, Suarez walks. Um, Carlos Santana had a base hit. Kyle Raleigh reached on an error. And then Abraham Toro, good for him, uh, delivers the walk-off single um, into right field. The A's went with five infielders, didn't work. Um, always fun though to see that and Toro delivers a big hit for them and a game yesterday I really felt they had to win um, almost more so than today you didn't want to go in a position where you could potentially lose a series to the A's like this um, so really good to see them win yesterday and at least secure the split um, like I said a game that really did not feel like they were going to win um, it, I, I'm not going to lie I think most of you if you're Mariners fans kind of had the same feeling that that was just your your typical Mariners loss that we've seen. And then, I mean, yesterday, too, they had Julio let off the first, got the third base, um, and then Suarez lined into a double play. Mariners had first and third with one out in the seventh. Frazier hit a ball that had an expected batting average of like 600, and and, and he lines into a double play. So, I, I mean, just it, it looked like one of those games. So really nice to see them win that. The game they won, I, I've talked about that they've lost a lot of games that they won last year, and, and that was expected with their run differential last year. But that was a game they won last year, and they won it this year. So that was good to see. Um, and then today, the Robbie Ray and the Julio show. Um, Robbie Ray was ridiculous. 12 strikeouts over six and two-thirds. Again, I know people say, oh, that's Oakland. But again, held Oakland under their season averages. So, you know, I bet you not a lot of pitchers have had that good performances against Oakland this year. And Robbie, went, Robbie Ray, I talked about they don't need him to be Cy Young when they signed him. They didn't sign him to be that. They just signed him to be a guy that was a stable piece in this rotation. But the last month, month and a half, he has been Cy Young. Ever since he started throwing that two-seamer after that Houston starter, during that Houston start, um, he dominated against Boston, um, Oakland, Baltimore, uh, Oakland again. And I think I'm missing one in there. Oh, the Angels. He, he almost had the no-hitter uh, against the Angels. So he has been absolutely on a roll. And now, I, I don't think he's necessarily in the Cy Young conversation, but I, he's got to be amongst the league leaders I'm in top three of innings pitched, strikeouts. Um, I, I know when I, I don't pay attention to win loss. I think he's seven and six. It doesn't really matter. And his ERA is, I think, 3.65. So 
maybe he does creep back in this conversation a little bit. You've now got Robbie Ray and Logan Gilbert and even George Kirby to an extent in your rotation um, really pitching lights out right now. And that's a huge boost. This, um, the Mariners have the lowest, I think the lowest, I don't know if it was starters ERA or team ERA um, in the American League. It might even been MLB, I'm not sure, since late May. So that's really good to see. And then I, I have I said on Twitter, I don't know what else to say about Julio Rodriguez at this point. Um, you know, um, the, the leadoff home run in the first pitch off Montas, um, and then the double in the sixth inning uh, to give the Mariners a 2-0 lead in a game where it kind of felt like they needed that extra run, and they ended up needing it because uh, Elvis Andrews homered in the seventh. He kind of felt like they needed one more, and Julio delivered a ringing double. He had the three hardest hit balls. They were all Julio Rodriguez hits, um, or uh, his home run his double, and then his out, his ground out, was even hit at um, like 111 miles per hour. His double was hit at an exit velo of 112. Um, just incredible. Now leads the team in home runs. And he's 21 years old. This is not what 21-year-olds are supposed to do. And, and you can kind of say I'm crazy, but I, this guy could eventually become the best player in the game. It's not crazy to think that Julio Rodriguez is going to be baseball's best player. The sky is truly the limit. Um, becoming one of the best of all time is not, I, and I'm not trying to put that added pressure on him. If he's just what he is now, he's a phenomenal player. But the sky really is the limit. I don't think Julio's watching this video, so I'm not putting any added pressure on him. But it really is the limit for Julio um, and what he can do. And I don't think we're far away here um, from him being one of the best, if not the best player in the division. You still got Mike Trout in this division. Um, Otani as well, and the Astros have some phenomenal players, but uh, I don't think we're far away from Julio um, being there. I really don't. And, you know, if, if, if you're a fan of another team, I think even you have to uh, respect and appreciate what um, Julio Rodriguez has done this year's 14th home run. Um, and, you know, he's driving around his 20th stolen base today, or was that, I think that was yesterday. He got thrown out trying to steal third. All reason he got thrown out is because he just slid off the bag and his finger, his hand, um, came off the bag, so he, otherwise he would have his 21st stolen base. I mean, just thing, doing things that 21-year-olds are not supposed to do um, in the major league. So can't say enough. I'm running out of things to say about Julio. I feel like you're talking about him every night, but he is truly a generational um, talent. And if you're a Mariners fan, just enjoy it. Um, some of you might be younger, so you didn't get to see Griffey Jr. come up. Um, you know, maybe you remember Felix when Felix came up. I even think Julio's surpassing that, and Felix was phenomenal when he came up in 05. And then obviously, you know, Ichiro, but Ichiro's a little bit different. He was an established player when he came over in 2001. But for you younger guys and, and gals, just uh, really embrace this. And for some of the older crowd like myself, um, it, it really, it's cliche, but it does remind me a lot of when Griffey came up um, with this club. And, and A-Rod, too, to an extent. A little bit of A-Rod in there um, as well for me. So, just a, you know, a joy to watch and making a season, you know, a season that's been up and down. It's starting to get better, but um, really just a joy to watch. I'm not going to dive too much more into the games. Like I said, Mariners win both of them 2-1. to one. They improved to 39-42 on the year. Um, now you have six games coming up. You have two in San Diego um, tomorrow for the fourth, and then on Tuesday, then you have a day off in Toronto for four. I think you have to go three and three in these six games. Um, as we look ahead, um, I mean, can you survive two and four? Probably. Um, but the goal has got to be as close to 500 as possible at the All-Star break. Now, they can't be 500 at the All-Star break because they just don't. They play um, an even amount of games. They have six with San Diego, Toronto, two with the Nationals, and then four with the um, with the Rangers. So th there's really, they, they can either go seven and five or eight and four. They can't be in between there. I think seven and five is fine. That would put them at 45 and 46. I'd be fine with that going to the all-star break. That probably puts you anywhere from four to five games out of it. Um, and I'm okay with that. And then hopefully you get Mitch Hanniger, Kyle Lewis, Ty France all back to make a run. Not going to be easy. Um, with this stretch, except the Padres are playing really good ball. The Blue Jays are a good team. Um, you know, the Nationals are struggling, but it's a two-game series cross-country trip. That's not easy. And Texas isn't playing bad ball either. The Mariners winning percentage-wise uh, did pass the Rangers today and the Angels yesterday. So technically, uh, the Mariners are in second place in the AL West. I don't know if they're going to make up 13 and a half games on Houston 
Um, I guess you do still play Houston. You know what? No, you only think only seven more games against the Astros, too. I, I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> a really good team. You don't have many more games against them. So that's actually, um, I, I think, a victory. So, you know, it, it schedule gets a little tougher here. There's not Baltimore, Oakland coming up. Um, but I think you look at these, this two game against San Diego and the four game against Toronto, and you hope for a split. Now, you're not going to have Jesse Winker for about all six of those games. He's going to start serving a suspension. And the earliest you're going to get Ty France back, as I said today, is the weekend. Um, Kyle Lewis has also gone out on a rehab assignment. Um, starting today, he's DHing for the Rainiers. Um, I would think maybe the All-Star break you're looking at afterwards, the All-Star break, getting Kyle Lewis back in there, that's good. Um, and maybe the same for Mitch Haniger. Um, hopefully, maybe hearing him going in a rehab assignment here soon. Um, so it's going to be a battle. You do get J.P. Crawford back. Um, that'll be nice, but you're still going to have to rely on guys like Upton, Haggerty, uh, Dylan Moore in that outfield for a little bit without Winker. I know Jesse Winker hasn't been an all-star or anything, but I, probably going to give you better production than what you're going to end up having to replace him with over these next few games. So um, the goal now is to crawl back to 500. They're now in a position, when you get to three games under, you're you're a sweep away. I don't know why I put that in quotes. I because, you know, there's not all three-game series, but you're a sweep away from being 500. We can start talking about it. Um, I don't think they're going to sweep the Padres. I wouldn't expect it. But if they do, then you take one from Toronto, you're back to 500. So, you know, the, the 500 watch is on. You get to 500, then we'll start looking at the standings a little bit and seeing maybe where this team um, can inch back into the race. Um, you know, I will say this. For the Mariners, while I, I don't think 39 42 is where everybody wanted them, we're at the halfway point now of the season, actually, at 81 games. Um, they are sitting with a plus two run differential, so they have a positive run differential. I think that shows this team, despite not winning all the close games like they did last year, this is a better overall team than what they ran out there last year. It might just not be getting some of the luck um, that last year's team got. And the young talent and the young core is really developing here, guys. Um, I, I would say stick with it. I know that's such a hard thing. Listen, I, I've watched almost every Mariners game for the last 20 years. It has been brutal to watch. I, I get it. I'm not, This organization doesn't deserve excuses um, for the last 20 years. But you do have a young core here. And a really young core and a young MLB-ready core that is playing well. You've got established... I mean, it looks like Cal Raleigh is starting to establish himself as a guy that, that's going to be your everyday catcher. You have Ty France. You have J.P. Crawford. I know he's tailed off a little bit, but I think you can still be happy with him um, as your shortstop going forward. You have Julio Rodriguez, um, a guy that has, and again, I know I might get ripped for this, potential to be the best player in this game. You have a rotation now with Logan Gilbert and George Kirby establishing themselves as premier or getting into that territory, maybe being premier starting pitchers. I shouldn't say that yet. Maybe Logan, Kirby, not quite, but clearly guys that look to be hits um, as far as prospects. To go along with an established veteran like Robbie Ray and Marco Gonzalez that you know what you're going to get from them. They have Flex in there. I, you know, Flex and Flex and, <laughs> um, but you, you, you know, and you, so you do have that core there of Julio, JP, Ty, Logan, Kirby, Robbie Ray is going to be around for a while. I don't know if I put Cal Raleigh quite in that tier, but you can kind of mix him in there. And then you know, hopefully I, I, I can't put Kyle Lewis in there. Just hasn't stayed healthy, but maybe maybe you do with Kyle Lewis. And you still hope, um, you know, hope for Jared Kelnick as well, um, that he can come up and be part of that core. But uh, I would say that while there's been some disappointing stuff, it does look like this team has established are a really good young core. Now now the key is to make sure that young core doesn't get wasted. You don't want to do what's happened to the Angels with Mike Trout, essentially, and or you know what I mean, and and end up not even making playoff appearances with guys like Julio. You have to find the guys to build around. And they have some pieces. Um, you know, I didn't make like Swarz is fine at third. I think you're okay there. Um I I you know you think Adam Frazier been better, hasn't been. You know, I, I don't know if Mick, Mitch Haniger sticks around. I don't know if you even rely on Mitch Haniger at this point. Um, I'd like to see the rotation maybe get one more upgrade in there. The bullpen's hard to tell. I mean, bullpens kind of go year to year, um, but it looks like there's some good pieces with Munoz down the bullpen. Seawald's still doing his thing. Swanson's fine. Castillo's fine. Penn Murphy looks good. I think you're okay in the bullpen. 
Um, but the young court is getting established here. So I know the results aren't there right now, all, all the way there with what we want to be. But we do have a young core established here that I think is ready here in the future. Um, and hopefully it's this year in the second half they get it going. So we're at the halfway point in the season. Mariners are 39 and 42. They've won 10 out of 13. Um, so that's great to see. This team is starting to play some good baseball. Uh, no matter what your record is, it's always fun watching your team play or watching your team win. They take three out of four against the A's. I said that's what they had to do. Didn't call for a sweep. Four game sweeps are hard. These are major league teams, even the A's. Um, so to say that was a little absurd for some people. They took three out of four. I'm okay with the split the next two series. I think that is just fine. I think I think even Scott Service, if you told him, um, you know, man to man, not to the team, he would take that as well um, over the next six. So let's hope they can do it. Maybe they surprise us. Maybe they they win four out of those six and, and do get you know that much closer to 500. Um, I think that's about all I have for today. I don't know if I'll have a post game video tomorrow. Said I'm still in the middle of moving. That's going to be all week. Next week, I'll be back to a much more regular, regularly scheduled programming. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. I'm trying to grow my subscribers. Um, please do. Like I said, I, I'm, if you notice, I, I'm someone that pushes out daily stuff. I'm always giving the post-game recaps. I'm, I'm dedicated. I'm dedicated to the team. Um, and I hope you see the dedication in these videos. It might not be super high tech, um, but I think I know my stuff. And, and um, you know, I come on here every day and make those videos. So, Please like, comment, subscribe um, if you haven't already. I will see you guys and gals later. And as always, go M's.